shall not be thrown down, right? And so I'm not going to go over the whole of it, but just like if you're doing a study, you need to like, you know, pick up back from where we, where we left off. And the scripture said he spoke about um, false Christ, false prophets, and um, the, the, the temple will be destroyed. Okay, and this is what he spoke about here, that everything was going to be turned into rubble. Spoke about the disciples who ran away out of the destruction and who were saved. And so it comes down to this point where he said here in verse 20, And when he shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is night. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart not out. And let them that are in the country, the countries enter, let, mm, no, no, I missed the word. And let not them that are in the countries enter there into it. For these are the days of vengeance, these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are a child, and to them that give suck in those days. But there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Okay? And we went over that before, where that when the destruction was coming, that there was a sign. Alright? And it was three years later when the judgment came. But those who ran away because of the, when they saw the sign, they knew, right, that um, they were saved. Right? They, were, they, they went out of the city. And that's why scripture said they were not supposed to go back into it. Because if they went back into it, then judgment was going to take them. Remember last week I was talking about that same thing with people who are backsliders. Because what they do is they come out, like they're going towards the city of, 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 of um, the celestial city, like the, the, the pilgrim's progress, right? And then they turn back, right? In that hour when you turn back, going back to the city of destruction, that's when destruction might just hit you. So you must never turn back. Never turn back. Okay. And the scripture says now, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and the moon, in fact, let me talk about this a little, okay? Because what was happening here was, was um, had to do with Israel, okay? And as Jesus said, they didn't know the time of their visitation. Kept asking for a sign, a sign, and a sign, and Jesus gave them sign. And as I said before, there were signs in the heaven, okay? Remember that, went over that, a night when he was born. There was a sign in the heaven with the angels who appeared to shepherds. There was a sign of the star in the east that came when the men, wise men came. There was a sign when he was baptized, okay, in the heaven. There was a sign on the Mount of Transfiguration in the heaven, right? When the cloud came down, there was a sign when he died. When, it, when it, there, there was for three hours, there was a blackout on earth. The whole place was cut off. All the light was cut off. There was darkness. And then came an earthquake, right, which was on the land. There were signs in heaven and earth. And now, Jerusalem, the people of, of Israel did not know the time of their visitation. But God gave them an opportunity to come back to their land, to be a people. They were under Roman government, and all they were thinking about is like, how do we get out on the Roman government? Okay? But they did not know the day would come when Rome would utterly destroy that temple that they glorified and that they worship. Because they worship the temple and not the God of the temple. Okay? And so the scripture said, after that destruction in AD 70, when General Titus came, he, he pu they pulled that thing down to rubble. Just as Jesus said. Not one stone was left upon another that would not be thrown down. So it was, right? And then after that now, there was great persecution 
against the Israelites. Okay? And so the scripture said what would happen to them afterwards was that the scripture said they would fall by the edge of the sword and then they would go into captivity into all nations. All nations, all nations. Till uh, um, Israelites have been there. Today they call them Jews, which is not even a proper word. Because most people don't know what it means. Okay? They were called Jews because the Judah the Judahites were taken away by Nebuchadnezzar into captivity. And from that time, they just went from one emperor to the next. From the Babylonian emperor, to the Median Persian emperor, to the Grecian emperor, to the Roman emperor with the Caesars. And so they were just passing down all over the place. Coming right down to our time. Right? And Jerusalem was trying down of the Gentiles. The Gentiles took it over and they built a mosque there at the same place where Solomon's temple was. And the place where Solomon's temple was was a sacred place. Because that was the place where Abraham took his son Isaac to offer him, where he offered him in a figure, which was a symbol of God offering his son for our sin. Okay? And then there was a ram that was caught in the thicket. I think you might know the story. Right? And, and Jesus Christ actually also is the lamb that was slain. So it was a very sacred place. And the scripture said, Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles till the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And that was that really was what was going on. Right? Even though uh, even though in 1967 when Israel redeemed the um, Jerusalem from the from the Gentiles. Right? And, they, and now it's the biggest controversy. That's a whole study by itself. Right? The biggest controversy of the world right now. With the controversy of Zion. Right? The Bible calls it that. And, and, and um, this is what it's going to cause Armageddon. Okay? The controversy of Zion. And the Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles till the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now that's another study by itself because the times of the Gentiles it's the times when Gentile rulers, Gentiles will bear rule over the earth. Okay? Now, 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 now Daniel saw it in a vision, Daniel chapter 2, right? As, um, um, he, he didn't see the, the vision. He saw it in a vision, but Nebuchadnezzar had it in the dream, right? And he, Nebuchadnezzar had the dream, he had the vision, and he had the interpretation, right? And all of these things, all of these things, I guess I'll get into that study another time. But the scripture said, Jerusalem will be trodden down of Gentiles, the time of Gentiles be fulfilled. This is a sign of the end. That even though Israel has become a nation, but Jerusalem is still being trodden down of the Gentiles. And there's a lot of fighting, there's a lot of wars, and a lot of commotion going on right there in Jerusalem. Right? And the scripture said, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and upon the earth and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, and it said men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth, for the powers of him shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Amen? So afterwards, it says, the scripture says that when they be signed in the sun, the moon, and the stars, okay? And we have a lot of those things until, as I said, it's almost like we don't even remember about these things anymore. Once in a while, you hear somebody bring out a post say, like, there's going to be a blood moon, a red moon. Um, and, and scientists don't play a lot of these things because they don't want you to understand the truth. Because they don't believe in God, they don't believe in the message that God has and the prophecy that is in the Word. But the children of God must pay attention to these things. Because you have been given the privilege to know these things. And as the scripture said, if, if you know these things and do them, then happy are ye. Right? Happy are ye if you, if you do them. Right? So the scripture said, men's hearts were feeling them for fear. That when you hear about it, Heart disease is the biggest killer right, of people. 
people are fearful. Fearful of all manner of things. Right? And, and one of the things is that the people of this world in their businesses, the devil have that, they play upon the people's fears. You know? I, I, I remember I was saying to myself, how is it that everywhere you go there is a, a security guard? There is a security this and a security that. There is a security this and a security that. Some people are so hedged up inside of their homes that you know, they are the prisoner because for them to get out of their house, there's so much things they have to do. They have to unlock this, unlock that, take out that code, that code, whatever, that code. Just in order for them to feel at ease to some degree because of so much fear. And I remember the days when it was like that. You would go to a bank, you would listen to the porter right there. You wouldn't say security guard. Right? But now you have people driving out of a place. Guns on their hip. Rifles, all these sort of things. And, and of course the thing is that really if you don't, if you don't get some kind of security like this, then they tell you, well, oh, this and that is going to happen to you, and that is going to happen to you, and that is going to happen to you. Okay? And so they play upon your fears. And all the while you must be fearful that this is going to happen, and that is going to happen, and that is going to happen. But it, all of these things are affecting your heart. So heart attack. All manner of things are happening to people with their heart. And if the heart becomes defective, you know directly that there's not much to life again. Right, because the heart is going to collapse. When the heart collapses, then you're dead. Okay? So the scripture said, men's heart fill them of fear and for looking after those things that are coming up on the earth. Now, if people were saying these things like 30 years ago, why do you think they would be saying now? Right? You know, a friend of mine, I sent a message to her. I uh, doing this Corona virus thing, and she sent back to me, said, well, you know, she's just trying to make sense, trying to keep her sanity. Right? And I know what she means. Because... The idea of you are going in and out as you please. And you know America is a place of liberty where people want to do what they please. Okay? And you locked up in a place that and you can't go outside and all of these things being happening. Yeah, of course you're going to lose your sanity. Right? Watch and see what's going to happen next year. I already wrote about all these babies that are going to be born. Right? Which are going to come out in this very same season here. Okay? Doesn't look good. Right? But watch and see what's going to happen. Men's hearts failing them for fear. And the fear is constantly with there. I mean, I mean, like it's, it, the people are pushing it. Pushing it. Oh, you must be fearful. You must be fearful. Till people don't even remember that. What about God? Why can't you trust God? What, what, about, what about faith? What about faith? And I'm glad for those people who came out and said, Hey, man, let's choose faith instead of fear. Right? The both of them start with F, but they go two different directions. One goes east, one goes west. You know, they go different directions, right? And so the scripture said, this is one of the signs of the end, and that's a, something that's going to be happening on the earth. And for looking after those things that are coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And we have a, a, a great one with that, right? Even with our weather, right? Where we don't even sometimes know when it's winter, when it's from summer, right? I said that the other day, I've, I've been writing winter and my heater didn't even come on. You ever hear something like that? In, right in, in winter, in December, my, uh, there was a day when my heater didn't come on because it was so hot, right? And there was a, a time in December when the, the, the flowers started to come out of the ground, right? Because the flowers got confused. They thought it was springtime, so they got up. Then after when the cold came and said, where are you going? And they slammed them back down into the air and they said, no, it's not your time yet. Right? Okay? <laughs> so, I'm saying to you, that, and, and then in, in the middle of summer, you have like um, a, hail, a hailstorm or an ice, something with ice coming down and people have to go and shovel it up. Okay? So you wonder to yourself what's going on, but every time with these people, right, they send these, these rockets, these satellites, all of these things up to the clouds, they mess up the whole system of what God has set up there. Because the Bible says, you appointed the moon for seasons. Alright? And man went to the moon. Right? And the clouds up there for the rain. All of these things for the weather. But man is interfering with what God has set up. Right? And the result is all manner of problems. 
all men are problems. And we try to live with it. That's the thing. We try to adjust to it and we try to live with it, not knowing that really this is not what is God's order. And another generation will come and will maybe think this was normal. It's just that me, for example, I can tell you the, the time when a policeman did, didn't carry a gun. Right? I would see them, they come, they, they, they would ride on the bus and I'm going to school. Once in a while you see one with a gun. And that was maybe like some special corporal or some officer I would see with a gun. Inspector didn't carry a gun. Okay. For what? What do they carry a gun for? When somebody, they, they were respected. They don't need a gun. They don't need a gun to move, get people to respect them. Right? And as I told you, you go in the back, you don't see the security guard with no big gun, waiting a um, gun on the hip, one outside. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? No! And this, this is one of the things that cause a problem, because you, you get into a, a situation, you don't, you don't know that, you don't see the, 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 um, the way how, I would put it, like the, the point of degradation in society, right? And, and, and I also met a lady who was older than me, and she was saying to me, I remember the days when we used to go to bed, we didn't even lock our door. And I said, wow, really? She said, yeah, we didn't lock our door, and nobody couldn't co come into the house and rob it. Okay? So then a generation comes and they see this kind of thing, and they think that this is really what life was always about. But it's not true. But it tells us that we're in the last days. Because we're going to go to that scripture, really. to tell us how things get worse and worse. Right? Worse and worse. And the scripture said, The Son of Man shall come in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up for your redemption joy at night. Now what is really happening is that for our people to be looking down because of fear. Looking down to be, become despaired, to become hopeless. And God is saying, at this time, my children should have hope, knowing that after this year, the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, then joy is going to come in the morning. Right? When Jesus was talking to his disciples, he told him he was going to die. But he said, the third day, I rise again. Okay? So there was a hope. So for us who are children of God, there is a hope of the coming of the Lord Jesus. All right, so let's move over to um, um, let's move over to Second Timothy, chapter Second Timothy, right? Chapter where am I? Let's move over to Second Timothy, chapter three. Now, when I was much younger. <laughs> I should say when I was a teen, I used to hear this scripture read in church so many times that I, I didn't even quite understand what it was about. But it says, verse 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And when I used to hear these things, it used to like blow my mind as to what it is. Then I hear people saying, you know, in those days, they say, but you know, brethren, um, it's like these things are really coming to pass now, you know, because we've seen these things happening in, right now, right? And then later on you hear somebody say, but you know, the Bible said, perilous times shall come, and perilous times are here. Perilous times, dangerous times, right? Dangerous times. Because the Bible, what was written in the scripture, was not written for fun. It was written to prepare us for the inevitable. 
and that's what what's, why it's written. The scripture said, said perilous times shall come. And perilous times have come. Perilous times are here. It is a sign of the end. And when I used to hear them talk about it long ago, right? It's like people get adjusted to it now as to say, well, this is the way everything is. But call to remembrance, as Paul said. Call to remembrance. It wasn't always like that. It wasn't always like that. Right? One of the biggest problems we have in this in this in, in America here was when they took the Bible out of the schools. It was a sign of the end to try to make the children to grow up as, as wild goats, as wild animals, that they should not know the God who created them. Right? But ask people who are maybe a little older than yourself or something like that, they will tell you there was a time when it was not so. Because they used to read in the Bible and it used to tell them, Thou shalt not kill. And they used to read in the Bible where it says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Right? And they used to read in the Bible and it used to say that, um, um, it said, um, Whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. They used to read that. Yes, they used to read, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Yes, they used to read that. And you used to have a dramatic difference in this country. But when the devil came up and told somebody that, well, listen, these children don't need to know about God. And the thing that bothered me when I heard about it after a while, I said to myself, well, they say religion, they must teach them about what religion. I was shocked when I found out that if the religion was something that had to do with divination or the devil, they could still teach it. Those books were still in their libraries. They could still read them. That was before the internet, because this thing been going on for a while. They could still read those books. They could discuss those books. But this book, the book of books, they were afraid of it. They said, no, don't let them find out about it. Don't let them read it. And, you know, there, there's a scripture in Psalm where David said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Right? Which, so if, for example, you, you had a, a jug and, and it was a quart, right? And the quart was a certain me measurement, right? It's just like I grew up seeing a gallon, and I, I hear them say that this is a gallon, right? Or this is a quart. But then, afterward, they said no. But there's a, a U.S. quart and an imperial quart. And when you look at the, the quart bottle for the imperial quart, it's much bigger than the one for the U.S. quart. And the gallon is the same thing, right? So if you carry a bottle, a U.S. gallon, to get gas, you will fill the bottle and still need to get some more because the pump was set for the imperial gallon. Why do I say that? Why do I say that? But my daddy could tell me, he could tell me, son, there was a time when it wasn't like that. There was no small gallon like that. There was no small quart like that. All the quarts were big like what you see here. All the gallons were big like here. This is where you want a gallon, this is where you used to get. Okay? Well, I'm saying this to you. Just as I said, there was a time when that lady told me, she said, we could go to bed right in the Bronx here. We, we, um, she said, right in the Bronx, right here. We could go to bed without, without even shutting our doors. And I said to myself, is this crazy or what? I don't think the lady was maybe more, maybe 20 years older than me at the time. I don't remember, maybe 30 years, I don't know. I said, really, in the Bronx? That was how me. Said, yes, she said, yes. Okay. There was a time when they got the full quart. If you understand what I'm saying, if you understand my analogy. 
And there was a time in the schools where the children were learning the things that they need to learn so that they, they, they can grow up to know their Creator. Right? But the perilous times came, man. The perilous times, the Bible said, would come. They have come. Dangerous times. Because any time you take God out of the equation, you are bound to have a catastrophe. Right? If you take God out of the equation, right? You take Him out of how do things connect, right? Without Him, right? You're gonna have devastation, and you're gonna have you're gonna have serious terrible, terrible terrors. Okay? And the Scripture said, "Men shall be lovers of their own self," right? Before there was a time when people cared about one another, right? In 9-11, it kind of brought people together. But people were, all of them were in the same boat, so what else could they do, right? But by the time the 9-11 wear off, everybody goes back to where they were before, okay? Everybody goes back to where they were before. And the scripture said, men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, and boasters, and all these all these things you're talking about is what's going on in the world today without natural affection. Why think they commit these kind of crimes? Because they don't care, they don't even have like a heart for their fellow man, right? And these evils that are going on in the world today, right? Coronavirus is, a, is part of this whole thing without natural affection, right? People don't see people as, as people, as God's creation. See, well, I can eliminate you and I can el el eliminate you, right? Yeah, people look at that. What do we think? I can eliminate you, okay? Yeah, but go ahead. Wait until God eliminates you, okay? Okay, because there's a God who's watching everything. And the scripture said, talking about traitors and people are tricky, heady, high-minded, and lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Right? And as I said before about the fear, this is another thing too which is promoted in our society. Pleasure. I heard a preacher talk about, he was saying that when he see these people going out to the ballpark and all these things, he said he don't know how God is going to save them because all they're concerned about is a pleasure. Right? You hear a man say, well, um, he wants to go, he would do anything to go to a ball game if his son was playing. But as far as knowing anything about God, they have no room for that. No room for that. As the psalm said, room for pleasure, room for business, but for Christ the crucified, not a place to enter in the heart for which he died. No place for him. Lovers of pleasure. So if it's not and, and you know, this thing becomes so ridiculous now, right? I heard them advertising the, the, the phone, right? And these people are wicked enough. They are so wicked, desperately wicked. As I told you, when they brought out that Samsung phone that was burning up people, I'm telling you, they knew that phone was, was defective. But they couldn't care less. They put it on the market anyway. Because by the time um, a couple of people died, what did they really care? They said the insurance would pay for that. And um, they would have made billions of dollars off of it already. Okay? But I'm saying, look at how wicked these people are. They tell you that everybody can have their own phone, their own tablet. Alright? So, you're traveling, maybe four or five people going together as a family, and they're going together. But everybody's on a tablet, on a phone. You know how that destroys the family? Right? There were the days when the family went together, they had conversation together, they played games. Sometimes they watch cars, they count this, they whatever. They do things together. But everybody's in their own little world. Right? They don't eat together anymore. Right? Because this one is watching TV, this one on the tablet, this one on the computer. They don't eat together. There is not a time when they come together. All these things destroying the family. Destroying the family, right? And it is allowed. And after a while, it becomes a norm. And that's a problem. As I said, a lot of people want this coronavirus to be over 